So today we're here, and I don't know if you remember me, I was talking about IELTS oral exam a couple of weeks ago. But today we're changing the topic a little bit. Today we'll be talking about English grammar more in general. So what does the topic involve today? Today we're talking about something that, yeah, we are all very worried about sometimes, or we're very lighthearted about sometimes. Um, a future. The future tense in English. What happens when you want to talk about something that is not now, but is later? Tomorrow, next year, and I don't know how much time. So what is it that we do in English? For example, I could be saying, there will be a few people online in some time, hopefully. For now, apparently there's none, but I'm sure there will be oodles of people queuing up to just to see this lesson here. There may, they may or not be. This is the question that we are addressing here. So when we talk about the future, do we know what's going to happen in the future? Do we know what will happen tomorrow? Well, some people could be fatalistic and think, no, we never know. We never know what tomorrow has it in for us. So sometimes other people instead like to think, oh, no. we know exactly because I have made a plan. So I know exactly what I'm talking about. I know what's going to happen tomorrow. But, so it's not only about people, it's about attitudes. So how you relate yourself to the future, whether you think you know, or you think you don't know. So here is the main difference that I wanted to point out. And I just wanted to introduce it with a long speech about what we know, what we don't know. The point being, we need to examine two main forms of future in English. Today, that's the plan. So what we're going to do is have a look at will and going to. So future in English can be expressed in more than these two ways, huh? mind you, but we're going to have these two today. We're going to be talking about the so-called will future and the going to future. What is the difference? And at the risk of sounding boring, since there's still nobody uh, online, I will take this liberty. Basically, the main difference can be tracked down to the very origin of the words. So what does go mean? Well, I think everybody knows this word. It's one of the very first you learn in any language. Go from one place to another. So I go to Jakarta. I am going to Jakarta. 
But let's make it even more simple because in these dark times of lockdown, it's probably very easy to go to Jakarta, especially these days. So let's, let's picture an easier situation. What does it mean that I go to the other edge of the table? So I am going here. When do I say I am going? When I have already started walking. So basically, I look at the other edge of the table, um, at this edge here, I can go here. So I start, I can tell you I am going here. I have already started when I'm telling you I am going. It means it started and it's continuing. I already have a direction. Somebody asked me, for example, it's a very common, it's a very common question in this country. Where are you going? You know how to say that, right? So it means they are asking this question when you're already on a motorbike and the motorbike is running, and somebody asks you, where are you going? Oh, just went over there, just to the bakery, I don't know, to the supermarket. That is one way of looking at the going to future. Something has already started. Maybe your motorbike is already on, or maybe you have already started walking towards a place. So you're going to that place. First is this. Number two is another, another kind of future that involves the word will. The word will, many people will have heard this word, but what does it actually mean, will? Well, will uh, in the olden days used to be spoken in English in the same sense as nowadays we use the word want. So people used to say, and this is very old English, nowadays you won't do that. You, you're not going to, it will sound very strange if you say that nowadays, very, very strange. But I will that. It used to be a sentence. I will this. It doesn't mean I will this. Basically, it means I want. It's another way, a slightly different way of saying, I want this, I will this. So in this respect, we can interpret the verb will, which is practically no longer a verb. It's being reduced to the state of modal verb or modal auxiliary. So what does it mean nowadays, I will? It is only used for the future tenses mostly. Again, of course, you can find some rare exceptions, but the verb to will, and mind my wording, to will, used to be another form of the verb want. So it is an intention. It expresses what your heart has as a direction. The direction of your heart is that, the intention. So I will go to, well, where will you go? I don't know. I will go to the beach. And this is an expression of what your heart thinks. You're the direction of your heart. I will go to the beach. Tomorrow, I will go to the beach. But this, as we know, the heart is very, very fickle, we would say. <laughs> one moment thinks one thing, and another moment thinks another thing. It's very emotional. So will refers to what you're thinking now. Going to makes a reference to what has already been thought or started before. This is the basic understanding of will and going to. So I don't want to bore you any longer with this. So let's have a look at a few slides. Um, bear with me, fellas. However many of you are here. And my very competent colleague is going to share the screen with the slides. Can we see the slide? 
Does everybody see, is everybody looking at the slides now or at me? No, they're not very well visible on the, here I, on, on, on my Mac, I see the slides. On the big screen, I see, so do people see the big screen or do people see what I see there? I think we should have a Ubuntu computer here at some point. And, a, and one Ubuntu and one Linux. We could also have an Atari here and a C plus programmable computer with, uh, I cannot find Zoom. Oh, here we are. Yes. Great, I found you, I found you. Okay, guys, apologies for this. Here we are. You can still see this. So go and go into and will. Um, what I see here is different from what should be seen. Okay. Could you come here and give me some assistance from here? All right, well, just bear with me. I know you'll be patient there. Excuse me, May. This PowerPoint here is mm -hmm. oh. okay. okay, here we are. Will I'm going to, anyway, here's the introduction to the PowerPoint slide. The simple future has two different forms in English, as I said, will I'm going to. So now one word of caution to whoever is interested in actually getting deeper into this. This is advanced English grammar. Why do I see advanced English grammar? Because you can just live a very happy life and always use either of the two. And people will understand perfectly what you want to say. So there is absolutely no extreme urgent need to learn the difference between these two, unless you're planning on scoring a very high mark in one of the exams like IELTS or TOEFL, probably IELTS more because they're more strict. Anyway, will and going to is a very subtle distinction. It's important to know it if you want to speak good English. It's important. It's very advanced and it's very elegant to be able to say will when it's correct to do so and going to when it's more correct to do so. Uh, on the other hand, there's other forms of the future that can be rendered in English. These are not the only two. In actual fact, there is way more. There is three or four more. So, but this time we're gonna be focusing only on the main difference, because as I said, it's somewhat important. It just, the difference between time. When we say something and when we have thought of what we're saying. This sounds a little bit strange, doesn't it? So let's imagine that right now I'm thinking, okay, what can I do? Uh, I will touch the screen. Okay. And now I'm thinking again, okay, what am I gonna do? I think in, yeah, in five seconds, I will touch the screen. 
One, two, three, four. I'm going to touch the screen. Five. I made a decision before talking. If you have made the decision before talking about the decision, you say, I'm going to. If you make the decision as you are speaking, you say, will. That is the basic gist. That is the understanding of the difference between will and going to. Here we have two example sentences. I will probably go to Italy next summer. I'm going to fly to Italy next Saturday. Here, you can actually immediately see the difference. And the difference is all in one word, probably. I will probably go to Italy next summer. So you can see that with the probably, uh, there is an element of uncertainty. You're, yeah, probably I'll go there. I haven't quite decided yet. I'm not 100% sure. But look at the second sentence. The second sentence is like, I am going to fly to Italy next Saturday. We don't have a season. We have a specific date of a week. Probably the lady already knows the time because of course, if she knows that she's flying on Saturday, she most certainly already knows that the flight will depart at this time from this airport and so on. So there is a plan. This is the point. If there is a plan going to future, if the plan is being thought of on the spur of the moment, will. Yeah, next summer, hmm, oh, we'll probably go back to Italy. I'm thinking now, I have not thought about it before. So I say, will. So here is a few other examples. Of yeah, the what I have just said, I will travel to Japan next year is a decision that is being made as I'm speaking. I'm going to study German at school is a plan. So uh, other other ideas that that can come to your mind, whatever you think about. If you're thinking about it and speaking about it at the same time, you use the will future. Now the future tense will has the usual forms. I just put this slide here as for your easy reference. One thing to remember is that will behaves like an, uh, a modal verb. So as a modal verb, it is a modal auxiliary nowadays. So you cannot say, I will there. You must say, I will go there. Hi, Miss Louie. Please drop the T from my name. I feel too honored. I'm afraid somebody might crucify me sometimes. So you never know. I will travel to Madrid in October. Will you travel by bus? This is a question form. And there is a negative form, which is, I will not travel, which could also be rendered with won't. Mind my pronunciation, won't, not want. Want is, yeah, I want to eat some. It's not very different, but it's different. So I will not is pronounced won't. Will you travel by train or by bus? I won't travel by bus, but I will probably travel by train. So the future tenses of this tense to will, sorry, be going to and will. As I said before, the decisions are made instantly. Okay. I'll see you on Friday, okay? This is what I say today, okay? I'll see you on Friday. Today is, uh, today is Friday, it doesn't work. So, uh, I'll, okay, I'll see you on Tuesday. What am I gonna say tomorrow? I am going to see him on Tuesday because tomorrow the decision will have already been made basically one day before. 
So predictions, instant decisions, and promises or offers. These are all the same category, the same category of decisions, okay? So the decisions of a promise, yes, I will love you forever, honey. It's something that you say on the spur of the romance of the moment. All right. Again, of course, you could say, I'm going to love you forever. I'm going to buy some food for you. This does not depend on anything else in the sentence, but your feeling, how you feel about the future. Do you feel that the future is something that you have already thought about? Who's going to? Do you feel that the future is something that you are deciding there and then? You use well. And there is many nouns for it, and there's many people who have different opinions about it. But basically, you can call them instant decisions, predictions based on what we think. It'll rain in the evening. It will rain in the evening based on the clouds. You can see there's a few clouds there. I think it will rain this evening. But again, sometimes you're so sure because you know the area, you know the sky, you know the clouds, you know the season, and you know that given some elements, it's going to rain. 100% sure you have already made this decision. You're only voicing it then. So you see there's not a strict rule to say this or that. There's just the feeling inside of you. And this is why this is advanced English. Because basically, whatever you wanna say is, nobody can question how you feel about it. Nobody will ever come to you and say, well, why are you using will and you're not using going to? It's quite clear that you should feel like this. No, of course, it's, it's your skill. It's your, hmm, it's, it's entirely personal. To cut a long story short, but it is noticeable when people can use it skillfully. Also, because there is another, um, basically there's another form of the future, which is not going to, but it's just the ING form. So basically the present continuous. In the present continuous, you can also refer to the future thanks to the present continuous. It's very possible. How do you do that? Um, basically, it's the same idea as going to. Now, going to, I explained before, is a kind of verb of motion. I'm going to. Mind you, it's, English is not the only language that deploys the verb go to express a future action. There's many other languages that do exactly the same thing. Because when you're going, you're moving from one position to the next position. So it's always understood as going forward. Sure, you could be stepping backwards, but this is not a natural thing to think about. You're usually stepping forward. So you are going into the future. So that's why we're talking in terms of future here. Because going to is an action of motion forward. And if you use it in the present continuous, I am going, it means you are in the process. A process started at a certain point, and you are in the middle of it and is continuing onto a definite point in the future. So I am going to study English at the University of Canberra. I don't know where. I am going to be a doctor because I have already started. I'm going to the movies tonight. I've already decided that. I'm going to have some trouble because I can already see the, the beginning of it. Okay, so you use going to when you think that something has already started and you are in the middle of it. I'm gonna like this. 
I can tell immediately, I'm going to like this a lot. Okay, something like this. I'm going to like it. I can tell immediately. I've already decided that it's very pleasurable, so I'm going to like it. But will instead refers to decisions that you're making now. I said it before, I keep on repeating the same concept. That means, let me just give you a few slides here just to reinforce the grammar. I'm going to travel by plane. Are you going to travel by plane? I'm not going to travel by plane because I'm going to fly in a hot air balloon. Okay, these are all going to constructions. There is a positive, negative, and question or interrogative. Are you going to travel by plane? Now, a word to the wise or to the phonetically wise. I am going to, as most of you probably already know, is more often than not abbreviated with I'm gonna. So, shall I write it here anywhere? I didn't write it in the presentation, but I could write it in the, in the chat line if I can find a cursor. Yes, I could find a cursor. Somebody's moving the cursor, I think. Okay, chat. There is one more thing that I would like to, to write down. I'm going to. Going to. Can be easily abbreviated. To. I'm going to. Which in turn. Can be easily abbreviated with I'm gonna. Which again. To take on an even shorter form. I gotta. Or I'm a. These are further restrictions of the verb I'm going to, of the future. So I wanted you to be aware of this for the simple fact that some of you may wonder what does this mean when they see I'm a, the last one. And that is simply a, a very synthetic way of saying I'm gonna. By no means whatsoever do I ever recommend the use of this in any essay. This is highly, highly inappropriate in an essay. It's actually even a little bit too, it's, it's not good in everyday conversations unless the friend that you're talking to is a very close friend of yours. So it's considered very foreign uh, language. But if you're curious to know what it means, this is where it stems from. And for your own information, it's always good information to have. I'm gonna, on the other hand, it's very common. I'm gonna, it, it, it's simply the phonetic rendition of I'm going to. I'm going to, when you say it fast, eventually, for the very rules that govern the move, motion of your tongue on your teeth, on your palate, on the alveolar ridge, and all these technical terms, eventually it's natural to say, I'm gonna. Just comes, it comes out more natural. Of course, you should always endeavor to say, I'm going to, especially if you're in a formal situation. But I'm gonna, it's perfectly fine. I'm going, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like it. Absolutely, 100%. Great. So don't write it like this in an essay, please. But absolutely no problem speaking it. So here is, well, a few annotations about how to speak, basically. Speak and relate to the interlocutor as well. I mean, make sure that you know when you can speak formally and you can speak when you can speak informally. So uh, a few other, I had also another PowerPoint presentation. Here, I only have the same ideas being repeated next and next and next. So I had some exercises here in, uh, in hopes that somebody would actually be willing to take part in this session here. I can see that there's actually two, two participants here. 
in Nikin. So the one here is, why are you holding a piece of paper? Okay. Here's a good question. Why are you holding a piece of paper? So you can imagine that this guy has got a piece of paper. Okay. Now, do you usually walk around holding a piece of paper in your hands? Do you usually walk around holding pieces of papers in your hands? Well, my colleague is shaking her head like, no, of course not. What way are you asking me this question? All of a sudden, I'm here busy and you're asking me about pieces of paper. No, you don't walk around holding pieces of paper. So if you are holding a piece of paper, why? It means you have a plan, right? So if you have a plan, what is the correct answer to this question here? Why are you holding a piece of paper? Will you write will or going to the future? Going to, absolutely. I'm going to write a letter to my friends back home in Texas. All right? So, perfect. The piece of paper, I mean, you can see here, you understand only from the situation. Perfect answer, Lee. Uh, this piece of paper suggests that this guy has already made up his mind, his or her mind, I don't know. Because usually you wouldn't do that. So the second sentence, let's read the second sentence. I'm about to fall asleep. I need to wake up. Ah. Oh, but here's a kind angel who says, oh, look at you. Okay. What do you say here? Hey, my colleague is giving the correct answer. What about you guys? Will, yes, absolutely. I will get you a cup of coffee. Correct, both of you. Correct, correct, correct. Why does she say I will? Because she's making up her mind right there, right then. She sees the person is tired. He's yawning. He's like, oh, I don't. Oh, I'm not going to fall asleep right now. Okay, I'll make you a cup of coffee. Decision is made there and then. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, that's pretty much satisfied with the requirements of the task. Basically, there is... Not much else to say, fellas. They talk. I mean, I could fill your head with words like um, plans or schedules or intentions. But the most important thing to remember is when does the decision happen? Okay. If it happens when you speak or if it happened before. It's all about decisions. I don't mind you still say, ah, decisions, decisions, decisions. I never understood what he meant by it. <laughs> Probably he tried to convey the message that decisions are important or that they are troublesome or that they require a lot of thinking or that it was funny to me watch, to watch me thinking. But I can tell you the same right now. Decisions, decisions, decisions. Let's make it. A, let's make another effort at this one here. We're so excited about our trip next month to France. Okay, look at this. There's our trip next month to France. So there's a trip here. It's going to be to France. Oh, I gave away the answer. I gave away the answer. I shouldn't have done that. We're so excited. Oh, well, maybe you didn't hear me. Yes, going to fantastic Greek. Yeah, absolutely. We are going to visit Paris, Nice, and Grenoble. Oh, to go with you guys. Yeah, because it's a plan, absolutely. The plan is next month. You can see that she said it. 
It's our trip next month to France. So there is an implication of a plan, so of a decision that's already been made. Most likely these guys have already booked the hotels in Paris, in Nice, and in Grenoble. There's bookings, there's maybe a guide paid up for the trip, a car that's been rented, a certainly a flight. So you see here, decision has been made. There's a plan. Next sentence. Well, I think you got it already. I think he, okay. Here, there's the verb, I think. Now I will give you the answer here. I think he will be the next prime minister. It sounds more natural to say, I think he will, than I think he's going to. Uh, simply because we are not people that, we're not in power of making certain decisions. So we are citizens, at least I am. Um, we vote, um, at least I used to. And if we vote, yeah, it's just one vote. We don't really know what's going to happen. We have no idea. So what will the future be like? There is no, there's no evidence now, or at least there is not for me. So it's more natural for me to say, I think he will be, because I really don't know. The evidence is just like looking at the sky. I think it will be sunny today. Maybe, maybe not. Especially here in this country, I've learned that you can never tell with absolute certainty what the weather will be like along the day. So you see here. So here is the end of the show, and I have some more exercises if you're interested in them. So let's have a look at this. Yeah, we still have a few minutes to kill here, but yeah, I was trying to tell my, my colleagues there's not much else to say the will and going to future. Let me give it a shot nonetheless. You can see what happened here. Yeah, there's some more cartoons that I could show you here if you're interested. And these are actually hard, this because I cannot make cartoons. I'm not really good with cartoons, but yeah. Some people are, if you prefer to explain things with visual images that are fine. Um, and yeah, here, I wanna share this with you. So let me see if I have learned. I close this, I select the Zoom program. I have my bad thoughts about Mac store notebook. No, zoom, 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 zoom. Here we are. Play from current slide. Yeah. All good. Yeah, I think we're good. It's going to happen. But in the situation, okay. Are you there yet? Are you still there? Great, good to see you. Okay. <laughs> it's gonna happen. Then the situation now makes us believe that. Again, if you look at the clouds that you see, I was telling you before, it will rain, it's going to rain. How sure are you? How sure are you? Again, it depends very much. It's a personal, it's a personal decision. It, it's not that looking at the clouds, you can tell you should use will, you should use going to. It's pretty much how you feel about it, right? If you say it's going to rain, you're also giving me a message. You are sure what you're talking about. Much clearer is the image below. The image below represents a woman with a big belly. And 
All right, once you have ascertained that the big belly is pregnancy, absolutely. There's nothing else that you can say, but she's going to have a baby. She has already started the long process that practically all women go through, most women go through, which starts from um, insemination and ends with delivery of a child. It's called pregnancy. So she is going to have a baby. It's a prediction based on evidence. The evidence that a process was started. So let's keep right over to the exercises because otherwise you're gonna be very bored after this. It might get only confusing. Yeah. Uh, I'll give away three answers and come on. Why are you working so hard these days? Because I'm going to buy a car. So I'm saving as much as I can. The second exercise, I made a mistake here. What are you? And you can already see since there is the verb are, it can only be the going to version. So let's skip this one here too. What are you gonna buy Jill for her birthday? Okay. And I say a CD. And my friend says, Mm, but she's already got a CD player. Okay, I have to change. Before I was thinking, oh, I've already, I've already made up my mind. I'm gonna buy her a CD. It was the decision I made before. But then my friend tells me, you know, hold on, she's already got a CD. Oh, okay, in that case, thinking now, thinking now, decision now. What do we say? I'll turn it around to see if there's anybody here. In case, I will buy her a book. I'll buy her a book. I'm making the decision now. My friend made me change my mind. Dad, can you do this with me? I'm sorry. Yes, mom. She? Well, absolutely agree. She will do it for you. You see, it's now. We're making decisions as we are speaking. I don't know. Ask mom. Uh, she will do it for you. Yeah. And mom. Classical example. You say uh, somebody else will do it. Um, Sorry, busy. But let's move on. Next. Why have you got so many eggs? Okay. If you ask the chicken, maybe she will give you an answer. But if you ask my mom, why have you got so many eggs? Um, because I want to, I don't know, I want to juggle with them because I'm going to make an omelet. Yes, we absolutely. Because I'm going to make an omelet. Why else would you have so many eggs? Yeah, you could be in a cake. I'm going to make a cake. I'm going to make an omelet. You bought eggs for a specific purpose, or shall we say, plan. I haven't got money. Uh, I haven't got enough money to get home. I haven't got enough money to get home. So, do I know my friend's financial status? No, I don't. I don't know how much money my, my friends carry with them. So, I have my money here, and my friend tells me, I haven't got enough money. Ah, okay. I will give you some. Absolutely, another correct answer, do we? I will give you some if you like. I'm deciding here and now. Ah, okay, don't, don't worry. But it's not that my plan before was like, hmm, I know that my friend never carries money with him, so I'm gonna get a little bit extra, keep it in my wallet because I'm gonna give it to him. It doesn't make any sense. The situation, the easier situation is to envision a present that you give your friend right there, right then, okay? Well, um, we still have some time, so yeah. 
I will lend. Yeah, give us fine lenders. Lend is very English. I like that you guys think immediately, I will give you some, but the English specify, I will lend you some. It means it alone, my friend. And tomorrow, by the way, I shall also remind you that you still owe me that money, if you don't mind. Yeah, thank you very much. That's very British. I will lend you some. You know, I will always, I, I never ask for money back. If I give it, I give it. I, somebody gives it back to me and another time, good. Otherwise, well, their problem. Anyway, let's not discuss philosophy of nations, but the point is the will and going to, absolutely, they will all correct. So well done. Well done, you. So what else have we got? Do we have another exercise here? Yeah, there was an exercise here. There was a funny story so about this lady here. Oh, you know this, I don't know if you've ever been to these guys, they read your future. Yeah, you're thinking of your best friend. Yeah, well done, exactly. That, that's, that, because otherwise I wouldn't lend money to a stranger, to be very honest with you. I, I would just say, ah, I yeah, need to, I'm broke. Anyway, let's get back to this. Yeah, there, there, there was something, but we don't really have much time. And by, by the way, it's just like uh, reading the future. You've seen this, the heart line, headline, the lifeline. So somebody picks up your hand. For example, this lady here, I called her Madame, you know, future. <laughs> she reads the future there and then. If she reads the future there and then, the will form is used usually. So you see here, can you see my future? Of course I can, I'm reading the, the, the blue lines. So tell me about it. You will marry a prince. Will form, because she's reading the future at the moment, she's got the crystal ball, She's got her magical spells. I don't know what else she got, a television maybe somewhere down the line. Always possible. But she reads it there, she tells it there, she uses will. So anyway, you see, I will, you will kiss it. No, I will not. Oh. Yes, you will and it will turn into a handsome prince. She's talking about the frog. You remember the frog? Basically, if you kiss a frog, apparently it turns into a prince. This is what I heard. And you can tell me if there's any truth to that. You try first. So I've never heard about frogs and princesses. If you kiss a female frog, does it turn into a princess? I don't know. You always heard that if the princess kisses the frog, the frog turns into a prince. But it contains some philosophy, in my opinion, because it's like there is an ugly person, but with the kiss of a woman, even an ugly person can become beautiful. I think it's got this symbolism behind it. Anyway, let's get back to the future will and going to. You see, yes, you will kiss the frog. I will not kiss the frog, which is exactly my colleague's reaction. Like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> yes, you will. And it will turn into a handsome prince. What are you doing? I'm not going to listen to you anymore. This lady is deciding. All right. She's been talking about kisses and frogs for too long now. I've already made up my mind. Sorry, it is not going to happen again. So a funny story and some other exercises for which we have no time to spare. So anyway, guys, um, Dwi, nice to see you as always. And thank you for attending this brief lecture about the will and going to future. I hope it's a little bit clearer and I hope I have shed some light basically. To cut a long story short, will, I'm deciding now, going to, I have already decided before. That's it, in a nutshell. Any questions, any comments, any music?
to recommend any no whatever anything any questions we still have time so i still have a couple of minutes to entertain any kind of questions that you may want to ask otherwise i'll just stand here and somebody will come sometime soon and i don't know announce that they're going to give free tickets uh or free definitions of english verbs here at ions and what is the difference between want and won't? Uh, well, <laughs> I want means, ah, they told me I should not uh, use your language, but if you're Indonesian, as I can, as I am sure, want is ingi, won't is tidak akan, very simply. Now, one is positive and the other is negative. Ah, want, won't. Want, won't. Uh, the first one, want, is the same letter that you use in... Uh, construction wah, ah, ah. It's, 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 it's a very large ah. it's almost ah but not really an ah it's ah it's pronounced in the middle of your mouth want that's the way i pronounce it english people will say won't but then for won't they say won't more or less i'm not very good with the english accent but anyway there is a distinct difference listen to mine i'll pronounce it again first one want second one won't oh 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 ah oh ah oh does that make any sense there's a big difference any way which you, you want to spin it, there's no way you can confuse these two. You can confuse them across languages, or should we say dialects, but not within the same dialect. It's very distinct. Want, won't. I want to do it. I won't do it. Any other questions? Let me see what time it is. Two o'clock. Sorry, I have more questions. Time is up. So my colleague is going to play the, um, the rock and roll music. Thank you for attending again. And thank you for, thank you for your attention. And I'll see you soon, hopefully. Bingo. Bingo.